Welcome to the TREAT e-learning module on the Model Inspector. The Model Inspector is a great tool to help you review your own model for accuracy, catch common input errors, and check the validity of any assumptions that you made while modeling. The best time to run the Model Inspector is after a base building or improvement package has been calculated. It'll then check the input and output data for a minimum level of consistency with a logical building model and with the TREAT calculation algorithms. The model inspector gives warnings, but these do not necessarily mean that there are errors in the project. They just indicate unusual inputs. The model inspector will also provide you feedback for how to fix common problems. To run the Model Inspector, select Tools from the main menu and then Model Inspector. The Model Inspector is also run each time calculations are completed unless you've chosen to turn this feature off. This tool was developed to catch typical problems that are encountered by users who are seeking technical support. There are five tab pages to the Model Inspector. The Inspection Summary gives an overall count of the warnings on each page. It also shows monthly energy use broken up by fuel and end use type for each fuel that you have present in the model. The performed verifications are broken into four categories building envelope, lighting and appliances, HVAC, and calculation results if you've performed calculations before running the model inspector. If you've made any changes to your treat model without closing the model inspector, you can select the update button which will automatically update the results in the model inspector. Otherwise it is updated each time you make a change from the selection box at the top selecting a different package or base building. Let's take a look at the building envelopes tab. It's really important when you're building your model to enter all surfaces through which heat is transferred into or out of the building. The model inspector is going to run checks on the model you've created to make sure it's consistent with a logical building. For instance, is there a floor that's adjacent to either the outdoors or ground? Is there a ceiling or a roof? It's also going to be sure that each unconditioned space you've modeled is at least connected by one surface with the conditioned spaces in your building. Right now we don't see any warnings for this model in the building envelope. Let's go back into the model and remove the slab floor in the basement. I'm now going to run the model inspector again. And on the summary page there are three warnings for building envelope. The model inspector is now warning us that there is no floor for this building adjacent to the ground or outside. It's also saying that there is a wall adjacent to the ground, but there is no slab below grade. And that the ratio of our floor adjacent to ground or outside differs from our horizontal projection of roof or ceiling by more than 10%. If you're ever unsure about the meaning of a particular warning, there's a help button in the bottom right hand corner which brings up context sensitive information about the warnings on that page. Also if you hold your mouse over the question mark a tooltip will appear that gives you hints as to how to correct the issue. Let's move over to the lighting and appliances tab. The inspector is verifying that the lighting entered in conditioned spaces is within 20 percent of 3 watts per square foot per day. This is an average lighting load for residential homes. This default can be changed within the weather and default screen under the advanced tab here. Let's go back to the model inspector. At the bottom it's showing a summary of the annual appliance use for each fuel and it's checking that there are indeed appliances in the model that use hot water. Under the HVAC tab 
It's running checks on the air conditioning system, the domestic hot water heater, the mechanical ventilation, and it's checking whether or not the combustion efficiency of the primary heating plant was measured. Finally, on the calculations results tab, it's verifying that all calculations were in an expected range for typical houses and that the results are not jeopardizing the accuracy of TREAT's calculations. This concludes our tutorial on the model inspector. We really hope that you'll use this tool to avoid common modeling errors and to give you more confidence about the energy calculations and savings that you're predicting. Be sure to check out our other learning resources online at treatsoftware.com. Here you'll find additional e-learning modules, information on classroom and webinar trainings that we offer. You can download updates to the software and find useful product information. And you can also visit our help desk. On the help desk, you can browse frequently asked questions, search the knowledge base, or submit a question that you have about using the TREAT software.